I just got off the plane from America. I landed in South Africa not even less than two hours ago. I am jet lagged, but we have to get a review out because guess what's launching today? Everybody, everybody else is releasing videos. We got the Ryzen 7 2700X. Can you feel the excitement? Can you smell the hype? Can you hear the squealing masses? Can you taste Intel salty tears? That's right, friends. AMD's Ryzen 2000 series chips have finally landed, and this is the first time I'm getting to see it in person because Tank did all the testing while I was transiting the entire globe. So to say that AMD's Ryzen process processors made a bit of a splash when they launched last year would be a gargantuan understatement. No one expected the chips to be as good as they were, especially not why should we innovate without competition Intel. With superior core and thread counts compared to any mainstream processors on the market at the time, coupled with dang decent core clock speeds and topped off with highly competitive prices, AMD essentially ensured Ryzen's huge success. But it wasn't perfect and AMD knew that, which is why they've been hard at work trying to improve the already impressive Ryzen formula. And today we can get to see what came of all of those tweaks and optimizations. So MSI South Africa sent us the flagship part of the 2700X Ryzen 7 right there. And then we also got the gaming M7 AC motherboard built around the new X470 chipset to mess around with. Specifically, Tank did the messing around. So along with seeing what the 2700X can do when coupled with the new X470 chipset, we also tested it with different RAM speeds and looked at what sort of a performance loss you're looking at by plugging the chip into an X370 board. And while we're at it, we also popped the chip's older, slower brother into a new X470 board to see whether the two would play ball. So we got the 1700X on the X470. But before we get to all of that, let's reacquaint ourselves with what we're dealing with here. Specs. Whereas the first gen Ryzen chips were all built on the Zen 14 nanometer architecture. The new 2000 series chips are built on Zen Plus. This is not Ryzen Plus, this is Ryzen 2 built on Zen Plus, get it straight, which comes with, two, with a die shrink of 12 nanometer process. Chips so far confirmed in the lineup would include the Ryzen 5 2600, 2600X, as well as the Ryzen 7 2700 and 2700X, the latter of which we have here today. And while all four chips feature identical Thor of core and thread counts, they're not comparable to Thor, the new lineup boasts significant upgrades in a few other departments. The most exciting of which is undoubtedly much needed clock speed boosts. The Ryzen 5 2600 has a base and boost clock of 3.4 and 3.9 gigahertz respectively, has 19 megabytes of smart prefetch catch, runs at a TDP of 65 watts, comes bundled with the race stealth cooler, and will set you back $199. The X variant of the chip is a much beefier specimen that will cost you about $30 more, but you get a cooler this time, and you also get a base clock of 3.6 and a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz on a 95 watt TDP, and then you get the non-LED race spire cooler. As for the two new Ryzen 7 chips, here's where things get especially exciting, and not only because one of them comes with the RGB freaking cooler, the Ryzen 7 2700 runs at a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz with a massive boost of 4.1, has 20 megabytes of cache on board and has a 65 watt TDP and is kept cooled by the Race Fire LED cooler and comes in at $299. Now, if you're looking to spend 30 bucks more and want to reach the tippy top of the current Ryzen performance ladder, look no further than the 2700X. It boosts a massive base clock of 3.7 and a massive for Ryzen boost of 4.3 gigahertz, 20 megabytes of cache and the highest TDP we've seen so far of 105 watts and an SRP of $329. It also comes bundled with the brand new Wraith Prism LED cooler, which I was holding earlier. The Wraith Prism is basically the Wraith Max cooler, which isn't bundled with any of the Ryzen processors, new or old, and features copper heat pipes, a generous heat sink, and more RGB than we've seen in the entire Wraith lineup, and is equipped with clear fan blades, making the RGB glory even more glorious, sir. That's a word, right? Yeah, yeah, that counts. I'm jet lagged. Don't make fun of my speech. As for its cooling performance, we'll get to that a little later. Spoiler alert, it's worth the wait. And oh, all of the chips feature native DDR4 2933 MHz memory support, which is a pretty bump from the, the previous gen. So as for the X470 chipset launching alongside the new processors, there's not a whole lot of new stuff to write home about. The X470 boards are basically X370 boards, mostly with superior support for the new processor support. Ugh, new processors. Support comes in the form of XFR2 and Precision Boost 2, both of which help the new processors reach their maximum boost clock speeds if power requirements are met and temperatures are kept in check. Other than that, X470 boards also ship with AMD Store MI, or Stormy if you want to make it sound cute, which is storage acceleration technology. Stormy essentially fuses your SSD and mechanical drive into one with software and automatically moves the data you access to the most to the SSD so you get the best of both worlds. Basically it's an SSHD but with software. Makes sense. The MSI X470 Gaming F7 AC we use for testing sports all of that along with a few other choice features most notably 
It has support for 3600 plus megahertz memory overclocking, AC Wi-Fi capabilities, support for dual card setups, including various gaming tools like Game Boost, and it also looks phenomenal with a touch of RGB lighting. It also features all of the ports and features you'd expect from a premium motherboard and has decent power but delivering VRM heat sinks to help everything run smoothly. But enough with the specs, just how well does the 2700X perform when plopped into an X470 board? Let's get into the numbers. Performance. 2700X, X470, 3200 megahertz RAM. Because Ryzen loves speedy RAM, we did this round of testing with our G-Skilled Trident Z RGB modules running at the rated speed of 3200. Something to note, however, is just how easy it was to get the system up and running at that speed. We've historically done most of our Ryzen testing over the past months with our memory rated at 2666 because we've had multiple issues with other chips and boards not being able to run at higher speeds without lengthy troubleshooting sessions and tweaking the BIOS and the voltages. It's just it's not worth it's not worth the hassle so much to our delight that was never an issue with any of our tests this time around even after populating all four dim slots so you got four dim slots 3200 each no problem whatsoever so it's a good thing because as you'll see in our second round of testing ram speed is just as big of a factor in ryzen 2's performance as it was in ryzen 1. but first here are the results we've all been waiting for when it comes to synthetic benchmarks the 2700x flexes some real muscle scoring a massive 1742 in cinebench's multi-core test and a decent single core score of 100 175. The chip continued to strut its stuff in CPU Z, 7-Zip, and Geekbench's benchmarks, managing some of the highest multi-threaded scores we've seen in all of our testing, while single core performance wasn't half bad either. Our W Prime and Blender benchmarks are slow completed in record times. During testing, we noticed some issues with reported clock speeds going haywire, but after updating our monitoring software to support the new processor, we got some great results. In multi-threaded workloads, we saw an all-core boost average clock speed of between 3.8 and 3.9 gigahertz, while in single threaded tests that jumped up to between 4.25 and 4.35 gigs. And since games love some of that single threaded performance, we expected some outstanding results and well, we got them. We ran all of our gaming benchmarks at 1080p with quality settings cranked all the way up, low anti-aliasing applied and using DX12 where possible, ensuring the 2700X would be the only bottleneck to our 1080Ti. Expectedly, given the hardware we were dealing with, none of the games we tested reported average FPS scores below 60, except for Total War Warhammers 2 campaign benchmark, but it's margin of error stuff. What was surprising was just how much higher than 60 FPS we were able to get with the 2700X in most of the games we tested. I mean, heck, we even saw an average score in Rise of the Tomb Raider of 155 FPS. Even though we did notice some lower than expected minimums, it really wasn't all that perceptible after all, and will probably be improved as the platform actually matures and we get better BIOS updates. The 2700X is already proving to be a mighty capable chip when it comes to both single and multi-threaded workloads and it'll only get better moving forward. Next up, 2700X, X470, 2400 megahertz RAM. Now we talked about how important RAM speed remains with this new Ryzen lineup, but just to help drive that point home, we re-ran all of our benchmarks with our modules clocked at 2400 megahertz. In our synthetic benchmarks runs, the performance loss from running slower memory wasn't as huge as we expected. Everything performed just outside of the margin of error during most tests. Gaming benchmarks painted a similar picture, but there are a few outliers like Ashes of the Benchmark and Rise of the Tomb Raider, which saw an FPS drop of 5.9 and 13 FPS respectively. Overall, the 2700X performed noticeably worse in gaming and synthetic benchmarks when paired with slower memory. It's not a major performance dip, but one you should keep in mind if you're planning on upgrading to one of the new Ryzen setups. 2700X, X370, 3200 megahertz RAM. When we first learned that the new Ryzen chips would work with any of our, the older 300 series boards with a quick BIOS update, we were excited to test it primarily because we wanted to see how how much an X370 board with its lack of support for XFR2 and Precision Boost 2 would hold back a Ryzen 2 CPU. So you know, that's what we did. Because our X370 board wasn't equipped with an updated BIOS, we first had to install a Ryzen 7 1700 in it to update it properly, which is what you're going to have to do if your motherboard is, if you're buying it anytime soon. Luckily, newer 300 series boards are expected to ship with a sticker designating whether they're ready for the new processors or not. So make sure they have that. So after that, we got our 2700X up and running, set our memory speed to 3200 megahertz, and it was off to the races. We expected the board to significantly hinder the processor performance, enough so that we'd probably have to recommend pairing your new Ryzen 2 processor with an X470 board, but surprisingly that's not what the numbers told us, not even close. The weirdness kicked in almost immediately during our first run of Cinebench, where single core performance on the X370 was only one point off of where it was with the X470. Even weirder than that, multi-thread performance was actually higher on the old board than what it was on the X470. It was only by nine points, but still 
higher is higher. Things normalized a little during our other synthetic benchmarks with the X370 board scoring lower than the X470 board in every test we ran. But even then it wasn't by all that much. Things got back on the weird train when we looked at gaming performance. While the 2700X plopped into the X470 board still scored the overall win, again by not any large margin. When the processor was installed in the X370 board it actually scored higher in three of our benchmarks. When we examined clock speeds to try to make sense of it all we saw why the 2700X performed very similarly no matter which board it was installed in. It boasted about the same clock speeds on both boards. During multi-threaded workloads the clock speed differences were pretty much imperceptible. While our monitoring software did show on the X370 board that the chip did max out around the same 4.35 gigs at the clock speed as on the X470 during single threaded tests it stayed closer to 4.25 gigs from what we could really tell. The only real difference between what we spotted in the two chipsets is that the 2700X ran significantly hotter about three to five degrees on the X370 than it did while plugged into the X470. This could be down to a variety of things that aren't easy to you know narrow down. We suspect that our X370 board might not know exactly how much power the new processor really needs and overcompensates by sending a little more its way than it needs to. And yes, we did test these on default because we were trying to compare the chip versus chip X370, X470, and so we expect that the voltage was probably a little high on X370. So next up, 1700, X470, 3200 megahertz RAM. For our last round of testing, we decided to test the assertion that Gen 1 Ryzen processors would work swimmingly with any new X470 chipset. And sure enough, it did. We even got our memory speed up to 3200 megahertz again without any issues, which is not something we can say for the X370 boards. We ran our synthetic and gaming benchmarks the same as before, and unsurprisingly, the results were about what we'd expect to see from a non-overclocked Ryzen 7 1700. Next up, temperatures. During all of our testing, along with clock speeds and voltages, we also paid close attention to thermals, and we're glad we did, because otherwise we wouldn't have known how impressive the new Wraith Prism Cooler actually is. At idle, the 2700X averaged around 32 degrees Celsius, while under extremely heavy load, it came in at just 69 degrees. GMAX don't laugh. Temperatures while gaming were impressive too, with the Wraith Prism rarely letting the chip hit more than 60 degrees. But if we're being honest, even though its cooling performance is you know, cool and all. Terrible puns, Brett. This is not how your brain's supposed to be working. The Prism's most impressive attribute is by far its looks. While I'm not a huge fan of the AMD logo not being centered at the top of the cooler, the RGB offer here more than makes up for it. The lighting on this thing is spectacular, and it's even more so thanks to the more translucent fan bleed design AMD decided to go for. Some might think it makes the whole thing look a little cheap. Those people can go fly all of the kites that they want. It's pretty and you know it. But the cooler does have one flaw, and it's not even the one that you might be an issue that you might encounter, even though we repeatedly followed the mounting instructions for the cooler and it was securely in place, it was really noisy. The fan itself was whisper cry even under a heavy load, but we weren't even able to get the mounting mechanism to shut up. It's Annoying rattling during operations, probably because it wasn't as secure as we would have liked. We tried to secure it as best as we could, and we even remounted the thing according to the instructions about four times and still couldn't get it right. But as I mentioned, that's probably tanks bad or, you know, we got a slightly faulty sample of the cooler. But whatever, even though it annoyed the poop out of us, it's a great looking and performing cooler. Overclocking equals fail. While we didn't plan on overclocking the chip to death in this review, the cooler's outstanding performance made it hard not to, so we decided to play around with clock speeds a little. Unfortunately, it didn't work out all that well because we were a little pressed for time because we got the delivery of this chip a little late. So we really only focused on bumping the clock speed and updating the voltage with the stock cooler. Unfortunately, doing that only resulted in sadness. We couldn't get the system to boot into Windows and stay alive long enough to do any of the tests on the settings that we tried. Heck, we couldn't even set the chip to its rated speed without bombing out, so we left that for another day. Luckily, others had a lot more luck, including Der Bauer, who's already pushed the 2700X all the way up to shy 5.9 gigahertz on liquid nitrogen. If you guys want a dedicated video on overclocking Ryzen 2, be sure to let me know down in the Discord or in the comments down below. I want to hear what you guys want us to do. Again, a limited time frame. Like I literally hopped off the plane and I was like, Reese, do you have everything set up? We need to film this video because the review goes out in three hours. So press for time to say the least. Bottom line. So with all of the testing that we've done with the 2700X, there are a lot of variables here, but mostly we're really rooting for AMD's new lineup. And you know what? We're not disappointed. The Ryzen 2700X is an absolute beast of a processor. While it's not as massive of an improvement over the 1700 and presumably the 1700X and 1800X, as I'm sure many of you would have liked, it does more than enough to make it a dang worthwhile purchase. If you already have a 1700, 1700X or an 1800X ticking away in your rig, it's not worth it to make the 
upgrade right now. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. It might be for you if you need that little bit of extra, but it's really not. While the performance improvement is significant in gaming and pretty much every other aspect, it's not significant enough that you'll feel like you're missing out by not upgrading because who is running a 1080 Ti at 1080p with a Ryzen processor? Not a whole lot of people because, I mean, if you're doing that, you're streaming and you're not trying to get the highest frame rate for streaming. I don't know. There's scenarios that you guys are gonna call me on, but what the average person doesn't need to do it. So the same goes for those on the blue team rocking something like an 8700 or 8700K. The huge performance boost just isn't there. If, however, you're on one of the lower tier Ryzen 1 or Intel parts, going Ryzen 2 makes phenomenal sense. They're exceptionally well-priced, extremely powerful chips that should handle everything you throw at them, and a heck of a lot more. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, if you already have an X370 board in your rig, we can't say the same for the X470 chipset. These things are going for quite a bit more than the X370 boards, and unless you really need the new Stormy tech, they don't offer a whole lot in return for that cash. While there is evidence that the new Ryzen 2 chips do perform a little bit better on X470 than on X370, it's by no means a big enough jump to justify the asking price. Unless AMD and board partners roll out new X470 BIOS versions in the future that will drastically improve performance and stability of these boards, we recommend just steering clear and going for the older X370 boards. You'll save a few dollars that could be better far spent on faster RAM or a beefier graphics card. So that's it. Ryzen 2 is a significant performance upgrade. I would honestly put this on the level of Coffee Lake at this point. This is the performance upgrade that we've been looking for from Ryzen and I am glad that AMD decided to roll it out even if I had made a video previously complaining about the time frame. It came out a little later than I was thinking. So good job AMD all around on this and thank you MSI South Africa for sending us the X470 board with the Ryzen 7 2700X. Wrapping that up, let me know what you think of the new Ryzen 2 lineup. What have you seen on other people's reviews? Let's have a chat about that either down in the community Discord or in the comments down below. Let's chat about that. If you're looking to pick this up, you can use our Amazon affiliate code, which is again in the description. It gives us a small kickback that helps us out a lot, keeps the channel running, but then you don't pay an extra cent and you just get a nice new processor. But let us know if you're gonna pick one up. Let us know if you're not gonna pick one up. The reasons, everything like that. Discussion down below, be sure to smash the like button. If you enjoyed this review, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel, back in glorious South Africa with my wootwear wall. Everything is as it should be, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully from the exact same location. Cheers.